In this lecture, we will review the various research methods to include descriptive, correlational, and experimental. Research is the systematic inquiry aimed at the discovery of new knowledge. It is a central ingredient in the scientific method in psychology. It provides the key to understanding the degree to which hypotheses and in the theories behind them are accurate. Just as we can apply different theories and hypotheses to explain the same phenomena, we can use a number of alternative methods to conduct research. As we consider the major tools that psychologists use to conduct research, keep in mind that their relevance extends beyond testing and evaluation of hypotheses in psychology. All of us carry out elementary forms of research on our own. For instance, a supervisor might evaluate an employee's performance. A physician might systematically test the effects of different doses of a drug on a patient. A salesperson might compare different persuasive strategies. Each of these situations draws on the research practices we are about to discuss. Let us begin by considering several types of descriptive research design to systematically investigate a person, group, or patterns of behavior. These methods include naturalistic observation, survey research, and case studies. In naturalistic observation, the investigator observes some naturally occurring behavior and does not make a change in the situation at all. The important point to remember about naturalistic observation is that the researcher simply records what occurs, making no modifications in the situation at all. Although the advantage of naturalistic observation is obvious, we get a sample of what people do in their natural habitat. There is also an important drawback, the inability to control any of the factors of interest. So again, naturalistic observation is a research method that records behavior in natural environments. These naturalistic observation can range from watching chimpanzee society in a jungle to videotaping and analyzing parent-child interactions in different cultures to recording racial differences in students, self-seeding patterns in a school lunchroom. Naturalistic observations has mostly been small science, which is science that can be done with pen and paper rather than fancy equipment and a big budget. But remember, naturalistic observation does not explain behavior. It describes it. Nevertheless, descriptions can be revealing. We once thought, for example, that only humans use tools. Then, naturalistic observation revealed that chimpanzees sometimes insert a stick in a termite mound and withdraw it, eating the stick's load of termites. They, too, used tools. Next, let us review the survey research. There is no more straightforward way to find out what people think, feel, and do than asking them directly. For this reason, surveys are an important research method. In survey research, a sample of people chosen to represent a larger group or interests, which is the population, is asked a series of questions about their behavior, thoughts, or attitudes. Survey methods have become so sophisticated that even with a small sample, researchers are able to infer with great accuracy how a larger population would respond. 
However, survey research has several potential pitfalls. For one thing, if the sample of people who are surveyed is not representative of the broader population of interests, the research results of the survey will have very little meaning. So let us review the survey. A survey looks at many cases in less depth, asking people to report their behavior or opinions. Questions about everything from sexual practices to political opinions are put to the public. The point to remember here is to think critically. Before accepting survey findings, you must think critically. The best basis for generalizing is from a representative sample. You cannot compensate for an unrepresentative sample by simply adding more people. In contrast to a survey in which many people are studied, a case study is an in-depth, intensive investigation of a single individual or a small group. Case studies often include psychological testing, a procedure in which a carefully designed set of questions is used to gain some insight into the personality of the individual or group. When case studies are used as a research technique, the goal is often not only to learn about the few individuals being examined, but also to use the insights gained from the study to improve our understanding of people in general. Sigmund Freud developed his theories through case studies of individual patterns. But what is the drawback to case studies? If the individuals examined are unique in certain ways, it is impossible to make valid generalizations to a larger population. Still, they sometimes lead the way to new theories and treatments for psychological disorders. So let us review. Among the oldest research methods, the case study examines one individual or group in depth in the hope of revealing things true of us all. Some examples are brain damage, children's minds, animal intelligence. Much of our early knowledge about the brain came from case studies of individuals who suffered particular impairments after damage to a certain brain region. In regards to children's minds, Piaget taught us all about children's thinking after carefully observing and questioning only a few children. In using the descriptive research methods as we've discussed, researchers often wish to determine the relationship between two variables. Variables are behaviors, events, or other characteristics that can change or vary. In correlational research, Two sets of variables are examined to determine whether they are associated or correlated. The strength and direction of the relationship between the two variables are represented by a mathematical statistic known as a correlation, or more formally, a correlation coefficient, which can range from plus 1.0 to minus 1.0. Please review my video lesson on statistics and correlation. A positive correlation indicates that as the value of one variable increases, we can predict that the value of the other variable will also increase. In contrast, a negative correlation tells us that the value of one variable increases and the value of the other decreases. Of course, it's quite possible that little or no relationship exists between two variables. 
When two variables are strongly correlated with each other, we are tempted to assume that one variable causes the other. For example, if we find that more study time is associated with higher grades, we might guess that more studying causes higher grades. Although this is not a bad guess, it remains just a guess because finding that two variables are correlated does not mean that there is a causal relationship between them. Again, correlation does not mean causation. The inability of correlational research to demonstrate cause and effect relationships is a crucial drawback to its use. There is, however, an alternative technique that does establish causality. It is the experiment. The only way psychologists can establish cause and effect relationships through research is by carrying out an experiment. In a formal experiment, the researcher investigates the relationship between two or more variables by deliberately changing one variable in a controlled situation and observing the effects of that change on other aspects of the situation. In an experiment, the conditions are created and controlled by the researcher who deliberately makes a change in those conditions in order to observe the effects of that change. The change that the researcher deliberately makes in an experiment is called the experimental manipulation. Experimental manipulations are used to detect relationships between different variables. Several steps are involved in carrying out an experiment, but the process typically begins with the development of one or more hypothesis for the experiment to test. Experimental research requires, then, that the responses of at least two groups be compared. One group will receive some special treatment, the manipulation implemented by the experimenta, and the other group will receive either no treatment or a different treatment. Any group that receives a treatment is called an experimental group. A group that receives no treatment is called a control group. In some experiments, there are multiple experimental and control groups, each of which is compared by the other. Now, let us review the independent and the dependent variables. The independent variable is the condition that is manipulated by the experimenta. You can think of the independent variable as being independent of the actions of those taking part of an experiment. Crucial to every experiment is the dependent variable. It is the variable that is measured and is expected to change as a result of changes caused by the experimenter's manipulation of the independent variable. The dependent variable is dependent on the actions of the participants or subjects, the people taking part of the experiment. So, when trying to figure out whether or not a research study is truly an experiment, keep in mind the following key elements. An independent variable is the variable that is manipulated by the experimenter. A dependent variable is the variable that is measured by the experimenter and that is expected to change as a result of the manipulation of the independent variable. A procedure that randomly assigns participants to different experimental groups or conditions of the independent variable. Only if each of these elements is present can a research study be considered a true experiment in which 
cause and effect relationships can be determined. So, when comparing research methods, we must remember that the three categories of research methods are descriptive, correlational, and experiment. In descriptive, the basic purpose is to observe and record behavior. Correlation research is used to detect naturally occurring relationships and to assess how well one variable predicts another. Data is collected on two or more variables and no manipulation is done. Psychological research is a creative adventure. Researchers design each study, measure target behaviors, interpret results, and learn more about the fascinating world of behavior and mental processes along the way.